Good morning to you. Today our theme is Jesus who rescues us. Our readings will be from Matthew 22 from verse 15, but I will just highlight a few verses. And then the second reading will be from 1 Thessalonians 1 from verse 1 to 10. We open in prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity where we can be in fellowship in so many different areas but together in spirit before you. Thank you Lord that we have your word, your living word speaking to us, speaking into our lives and allowing us to readjust to change, to be transformed and renewed, and to fill us with new hope, with a deeper assurance, and renewed dedication to continue to be part of your people on earth. Continue to inspire us to live according to your kingdom principles even in our world that we know is in so many ways different to what you desired. Open our minds and our hearts and help us to focus on you and you alone for the next few minutes. In Jesus' name, Amen. In our Matthew reading, we have the incidents where the Pharisees went out to plot against Jesus. And then they sent their disciples to him. And they said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay, pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. Up to here, our Gospel reading. And then our reading from 1 Thessalonians 1. Paul Silas and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your works produced by faith, your labor prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. Now this is Paul 
writing a letter to one of the new churches, young believers in Christ. Something came to mind during the week and the readings of the lectionary readings. And I want to ask you as I ask myself, what do you like about the Bible? Maybe it's not the kind of question to ask about the Bible, but in asking that, there are a few things that does come to mind as answers for me. The main thing for me during the readings of this week are the people I read about. Real people showing real human behavior I can relate to. Think about Moses. Moses who were really begging or maybe even nagging to see God. I can relate, relate to that desire. Think about the religious leaders who might not really longed for an answer from Jesus, but who were really hoping for something they could bring against Jesus. As teacher, Jesus was drawing too much attention from the crowd and stealing the limelight of the religious leaders and putting their position at risk. A natural way of responding for most humans when you feel threatened is to attack and that is what they wanted to do. And then Paul. Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. We see the deep joy for a group of believers who stayed strong and remained faithful in a time of opposition and false teaching. It is good to read this. And from the encouragement from Paul to them, we can all be encouraged to remain faithful, to remain strong and focused on that which is most important during a very difficult time. Paul brings to them the assurance which all congregations need to be reminded of and need to hear from time to time. That is the fact and the affirmation that they are chosen by God. In knowing that they are given reason for confidence and the deep assurance that they are not alone. Even in that most difficult time, they are not alone, as we are not alone. Brother and sister, brother and sister of this congregation, doesn't matter which one it is that you find yourself in, know this, we are all chosen by God. We are all definitely loved by God, and therefore, None of us are alone. Maybe we as church are also challenged by the world. Maybe we are also questioned about the law and the government of the time. And maybe questioned very much in the same way that we see here happening in Matthew 22. Look at verse 16 to 17 again. They sent their disciples to him, that is Jesus, along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus here underlined in his response the importance of obedience 
not just to the commandments of God, but equally so to the law of the country. It is in both of these, obedience to God and obedience to the law of the country, that we must be found to be obedient and diligent, to really be the light of Christ in this dark world. In all we do, we are representing the kingdom of God, even in the way we pay our taxes. What Paul is saying is really positive, positive comments about this congregation. Because he said there in verse 3, For we remember before our God and Father how you put your faith into practice. How your love made you work so hard and how your hope in our Lord Jesus Christ is firm. Paul and the other remembered how they have put their faith into practice. How their love for God made them work hard. How their hope in Christ is firm. Further on, Paul also mentioned that they had a joy in them that comes from the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful witness and inspiration to those people. To understand this, we need to unpack it even more. As disciples of Christ, we need to be imitators of Christ. It is asking that we will be living in such a way that his ways, his character and his behavior is seen in all we do. It is saying and expecting that we will love as he did unconditionally. We will love others as we love ourselves according to his command. We will accept others for who they are, even when they are very different. And it is saying we will not be judgmental or filled with criticism for their actions. We will be forgiving and merciful in putting our faith in action. Nothing will be about ourselves anymore. But the aim will be to bring glory to God in all we do and make Him known. Let's be honest. None of us can do this in, on our own because in our human nature we are not strong enough to remain so focused and so dedicated. God knew and, and understood this and that is why we receive a helper, the gift of the Holy Spirit, to guide and help us in all we do. It is this Holy Spirit that is not just helping us, but also filling us with a spirit of joy and assurance that our, that our efforts and even failures are never a waste or a loss but it forms part of the process of growth and spiritual development. That is why we can also still have hope in this year 2020, when nothing resembles what we previously thought to be normal. Let's think back over the readings of this week. Moses never saw God, although he nagged for that. But he saw the goodness and the righteousness and the mercy of God. And we need to be so focused that we see the same. Because that will always be real and normal. When nothing else might be normal anymore. The goodness, the righteousness and the mercy of God will never change. If we hold on to that, 
then our hope will remain alive and focus on what our last verse is bringing to us. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10 To wait for the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Yes, by the blood of Jesus, we are washed clean. Our sins are forgiven. We are restored. And He will continue to walk with us. To continue to rescue us from the coming wrath at the end of this world. We have reason for confidence because we are his beloved children. We are forgiven. We are sealed in by his blood. Remember that and continue to live according to his ways and be his shining light in this dark world. Amen. Father God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that we know Jesus rescues us and that he will come back from where he intercede now for us, will come back to come and fetch us, that we will be with him for eternity. Father, in these difficult times when nothing seems to be normal anymore. Help us to foc focus on you because you and your love and your acceptance is the normal, the only normal that is important. Guide and lead us, not because we deserve it, but because we are nothing without you. In Jesus' name.